that's sort of my short spiel on why things that grow longer or better. And that becomes a, a particularly major point when we talk about astragalus. When we go deeper into this, we'll realize that for 1,000, 2,000 years since the Han Dynasty, astragalus was grown in Inner Mongolia, where it was wildcrafted between the 6th and 8th year. And now what we find on the market is primarily 1 or 2 years old. And so in the old books, we're talking about using 6 grams of astragalus, and now in the clinic, I have to use 60 to achieve the same function. So pretty pictures. Um, everybody take a deep breath. Uh, okay, so astragalus has two different kinds. It has the, in, the kind from Inner Mongolia, which is called Mungu, Mungu Huangchi, or just Inner Mongolia. That would be the uh, astragalus membranaceus var mongolicus. And then we also have Moja Hongqi, which I think is more familiar to everybody, which would be the Astragalus membranaceus, which what is most of what is in cultivation in the U.S., what, is, what people are selling seeds of, which is Astragalus membranaceus. Uh, historically, both wildcrafted and cultivated, although currently cultivated form is much more common. It first appears in the Shenong Vensajing also, where it's called um, Lao Qi. In this case, Lao means old. 60 years are more old. 60 can also be, this Lao can also mean uh, attainment. Or, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm saying the wrong word, qi. Anyway, 60 years, like in, in Chinese culture, you have this idea of 5 times 12 is 60. This is your, the 12 year cycle plus the five phases, and then 60, and once you're 60, your whole life starts over again at 61, because you've done mm -hmm. everything you can. Um, to me, this speaks to the idea that, um, that originally it was always recognized that Huang Qi should be grown for a very long time. So in, in uh, Shenong Ben Sao Jing, Huang Qi is described as treating welling and flat abscesses, chronic putrefying sores, pushes out pus and stops pain, treats great wind leprosy, the five kinds of hemorrhoids, rat fistulas, supplements emptiness and treats the hundred diseases of small children It grows in mountain valleys. Um, stereotypical formulas for Huang Qi in in include Huang Qi Jian Zhong Tang, which is Hang Huang, uh, stragglers to construct the middle decoction, which is for um, what's called deficiency taxation, Shu Lao. Uh, Huang Qi Gui Zhu Wu Tang, which is for a type of blood impediment, which leads to numbness in the extremities, uh, which maybe we see a lot in people with diabetic neuropathy. Um, and how, that's how that formula is kind of a class where that formula is used, and then Fangji Huang Qi Tong, which is used for superficial swelling. Um, all of those formulas move into modern formulas where they're used in like Yuping Fang San or any of these formulas that people who do Chinese medicine would recognize. I'm not going to list. Modern day function of Huang Qi is pretty much identical to how it was thought of 2,000 years ago. At this point, it boosts the Qi and secures the exterior. It promotes urination and dries out toxin. It promotes the discharge of pus, encourages healing of ulcers, and generates flesh. Um, Huang Qi itself is grown uh, Mongu Huangqi is from Heilongjiang and uh, Inner Mongolia, which is Heilongjiang is here, Inner Mongolia is here, and then the Moja Huangqi is primarily also Heilongjiang and Liaoning uh, and this whole kind of area in this region also. These things that they kind of start up here and they're kind of migrating down towards further south to other regions closer <coughs> to Beijing. The essential points for cultivation include, so again, it's a deep rooted, it, like the higher quality root is gonna be 70 centimeters long. And, uh, it's like 30, 40, and it's really long. So if you have a clay layer that's like 12 inches deep, you're never gonna grow very good long chain. Um, or it won't pass, it won't look good. Uh, so, it goes, like, the highest quality material looks is just a ginormous taproot like that. Okay. I mean, what, you can see what I'm growing. I've been passing it around, so let's pass around the Huangqi. So we have a, a million different kinds of Huangqi here. Anyway, we have four different kinds of Huangqi, and, you know, I'm... Pass those around. Um, so again, this is a, like, a, almost a desert plant. It prefers sunlight, it likes a deep, loose soil. 
fertile, well-drained. Well I mean, that's sort of the Arenaceous loam, where it's deserty, but it has a, it has, it's sandy, but it has a significant amount of organic material in it, the hummus, um, and a, a high potassium content. It's averse to thicky and heavy. It, it's averse to sticky and heavy soil uh, areas with the high groundwater. It's areas that are prone to water logging or soil that is too far on either side of the basic or acidic side. So, um, Huangqi is typically propagated via seed propagation. So the seeds can be sown in the middle ten days of April until the first ten days of May or the last 10 days of June until the first 10 days of July. Or they can be sown in fall. So spring sow, summer sow, fall sow. Supposedly all of that's fine. Um, a lot of people will talk about seed treatment for Huangqi, like a lot of the other Leguminaceae family members. Like, do you want to use scarification? Or uh, there's boiling methods. You can do scarification and soaking and collect the ones that are floating. You can use sulfuric acid, because that's what the books say. Um, or you can just throw them in the ground and they'll germinate, you know? It just kind of depends how many you have, I guess. Um, also, I mean, there is talk about going through your astragalus seeds and picking the ones that are like the largest and have the shiniest coat, and those would be the highest quality seeds, Absolutely. which would then evergreen. All right. <laughs> I, yeah. Everyone wants to see the seeds. Oh, you have them with you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, good seeds. Easy enough processing. I don't process my I don't process my astragalus seeds. I process uh, glycyrrhiza seeds. Same family member. Seems like the seed coat is a little bit harder to split for the for the seed on a with the glycyrrhiza. Anyway, um, so again, field management. We have nice, wonderful fields of monocrop Huangqi, which may or may not make your stomach turn. Uh, so you know, at the time of the seedlings emergence. Maintain the soil moisture, and uh, when the, after the seedlings remove, uh, emerge, remove the weeds during the growth phase. Apply the right amount of fertilizer and irrigate if there's really sustained dryness. During the rainy season, make sure that that the water isn't too much. Monitor how the soil is carrying the water, and if you're harvesting it, as soon as the the flowers start appearing, you have to remove them. <laughs> 